Welcome to a brief explanation of uh, how to get started with the exercises in the course. Um, the exercises uh, in, in the course, uh, uh, or this as exercises, they are basically in several different courses. So in this case I will demo for the course 1DV022, uh, but you could uh, follow those instructions if you are reading another course like 1DV525 for instance, that use the same exercises. So this is exercises in the client-side JavaScript, and in this um, in those exercises we will we'll be using Vagrant uh, uh, as a virtual machine f like a running environment for our uh, for our code so we don't need to install a lot of uh, tools on our local computer uh, so th these are some examples of, of uh, packages we might be using like browserify npm and node and maybe we don't want to install them on our local machine and maybe in this course we will uh, use the latest table uh, or actually the latest version of node uh, and uh, in other projects you might be using another version of node and uh, instead of handling different versions of the same software on your local machine we could use vagrant to handle this for us so so we have one machine which is specific for the exercises. And we have the exercises prepared in a repo on GitHub. Uh, the URL is <laughs> quite a long one, uh, but there should be links on your course webpage to this uh, uh, repo. And it's github.com slash CS LNU learning objects slash client side JavaScript exercises. And in this repo you will find a vagrant file and the vagrant file is the file that uh, defines our uh, vagrant environment which uh, packages to install and how this uh, machine should be uh, configured and we will have a look at that in a moment uh, but when you you will also be working with git uh, and uh, checking in and um, checking in your your exercises and your code uh, so we will start in that end and if you uh, navigate to uh, the GitHub organization for your course on GitHub, in this case github.com slash 1dv022 uh, or uh, 1dv525, you will find that you have a private uh, repository named your username uh, dash exercises. And this is the, uh, uh, the repo that we will use to commit our changes. So the first thing we need to do is to clone this uh, this exercise report to our local machine. In my case I use the H uh, SSH uh, um, uh, address for cloning. Uh, if you haven't set up any SSH keys on your computer you could use the HTTPS link instead but I can't use this one because I have the SSH keys and so I need to use this one. So I copied this one and opened a terminal window. Um, close that one. So in the terminal I uh, have created a folder uh, that is the course code uh, just to have all, all the stuff uh, in the same place and I do a simple git clone. Of course you need to have git installed on your local machine and I should recommend it because you will be using git a lot. So I clone this uh, uh, exercise repo and it says oh warning you have apparently cloned an empty repository and we have because we haven't done anything in it and if we enter it and have a look it's empty uh, in the terminal we also get some hint that okay this is version handled by git and we are in the master branch and this will be really important later on so that was the first step we have cloned our empty rep repo uh, now we need to take the exercise repo and add it to our repo because this is the files we will need and in the exercise folder it's empty right now but uh, if we have a look we have a lot of branches uh, and branches are like different versions of this repo uh, so we can have a look at the branch like the 
Tiny Tunes, this is one of the exercises. So if we change branch to Tiny Tunes and look inside the ex uh, exercise repo, we will have a, a folder named Tiny Tunes. Uh, so this exercise repo is containing all of the exercises that we need, so we will have to clone this as well. Or not clone, we should incorporate this into our uh, repository. So we do the same thing, I copy the address for uh, for this repo and <coughs> now we should do... Um, um, we, will, we, we could do this um, uh, like just pulling down the, uh, the, the this address and, and getting all the stuff into our repo but if we add something from the from the course management, add a new branch for instance for instance, you uh, sh should be able to 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 easy easily um, update your repo, and because of that, we will create something called a remote. So we could do uh, a git remote minus v just to have a look which remotes we have. Uh, remove no remote, uh, and we have the origin, and origin is pointing to GitHub and our exercise repo, because this is the origin of, of this repo. Uh, this is the upstream of the repo. Uh, but we will uh, create another uh, uh, another remote, and we will do that by using git remote add and the address that um, uh, uh, that we had, and name exercises. Let's see if I did that in the right order. Uh, no. I did not, of course, the name should be first. So git remote add, what should the name of the remote be? And that should be exercises. And what should exercises point, point at the repo, a client side JavaScript exercise. Okay, git remote minus v. Uh, and now we see we have uh, the exercises and we have the origin one. So we, now we could like, fetch stuff from exercises and from the from our github account and we could also uh, pull uh, changes to our github account you, you you will not be able to pull changes directly to this one because that's a sh shared re resource that you don't have access to okay now we could incorporate the exercises into our repo and we do that by git pull exercises and exercises is this exercises is the name of the remote. So, and pull says basically take change uh, take uh, content on the exercises and incorporate that into our or merge it into our repository. Yeah, and you see you get a lot of branch branches. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, and this is the exercises, each one in a separate uh, branch. Uh, I'm not sure this is necessary, but I will in this case do a git merge. Uh, not something. No, we can't. Okay, but we could do a git push origin. So we take those. Uh, we could do a git status just to to make sure that we have nothing uncommitted, and we haven't because we haven't a added anything new more than already committed code. And we do a git push origin, and this will push to our GitHub uh, account. Uh, Refs master does not uh, match any failed to push on refs. Why, 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 why is that? Yeah, I actually wrote something wrong. Uh, uh, we should write it like this, uh, and this is kind of a hack in this case to, to, to make everything smooth. So git merge exercises master. Uh, so we are merging the, the exercise master with our, uh, the local master. Uh, if we do a ls we will find all the files right now. And now we could do a push, <laughs> git push origin, origin. And it hopefully should work, yeah. And you could just to verify, you could go to your exercise repo, update this page, and the changes should be here. Right now, we only have one branch, uh, and that that is because we haven't pushed the branches to our repo, but we haven't made any changes to to them e either. So we could uh, push each branch after we are done with an exercise if we want to store them on GitHub.
Well then, now everything is set up and ready to start working. Uh, so the next step is to uh, start using Vagrant. And uh, as I said, if we do an LS, uh, we will find that we have a Vagrant file and this Vagrant file has settings uh, for how our machine should be uh, uh, be set up. And, and we have made this one for you, so you don't need to do anything more than writing Vagrant up. Vagrant up is the command of starting the machine. And this is a command you will have to run every time you want to start up uh, and start working with the machine. And I, I, um, I would use Vagrant Halt when I'm done w working because you don't want this machine lying in the background taking up resources from from your local machine when you're not using it. So uh, bear in mind when you're when when you're ready for the day, do a Vagrant uh, Halt to to to, uh, to 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 shut down the machine, and when you're ready to work, do a Vagrant up and it will start. Right now, this will take some time, and that's because the first time it need to download uh, and install a lot of packages. So make sure that you have an internet connection when you're doing this. You will get some red uh, stuff uh, in, in, in the terminal uh, window, and that's okay. Just ignore it for now if, if you don't get a serious error, and you should not, hopefully. Um, I will pause the video for a while and then we will uh, continue. And we're done. This took a couple of minutes for me, uh, depending on your computer speed uh, and internet connection, it could could vary. Uh, so Vagrant, the Vagrant machine is installed and up and running. So now it's running on your local machine. Uh, you could. Um, this is not a graphical uh, UI for this machine. You don't have a, a graf graphical UI to, like you have on Windows or, or OS X. This is a Linux machine without a graphical uh, interface, so you will have to use the terminal to communicate with, with this machine. And you do that by writing Vagrant SSH. This will uh, log us into the machine, basically. Uh, so if we do that, you will see that the prompt will change. We are now inside of, of uh, the Vagrant machine, and we see that here. We are not oh, we are not on our local computer anymore. Um, we can list some files. We can see that we have a packet.json in the Vagrant slash exercises folder. If we exit this one, uh, closing the connection, uh, and we go into the exercise folder, we will see that we have the exact, exact same thing. So the exercise folder in our exercises repo is the same thing as the vagrant slash exercises inside of the machine. So those are mirrored. So if we do changes in uh, in the exercise folder, they will be uh, immediately replicated in, in the vagrant machine. It's actually the same files. Uh, and we could take advantage of this. We, Of course, we want some kind of graphical client to work uh, an IDE like WebStorm, Atom, Sublime, or some kind of editor that, that we could use. And we will uh, take, take advantage of this using a, uh, an uh, IDE installed on our local machine. In my case, it's WebStorm. So I will start up WebStorm uh, if I haven't. We have it here. And I will uh, open a new file or new uh, folder. Um, where do I have that one in WebStorm projects? Um, one DV022 and TSTU student exercises. This is my repo that I've just cloned. Uh, so I opened that one, move it into place. Uh, and here we have our files. So uh, I will leave the terminal window, this terminal window like that, and I will use the terminal window inside of WebStorm right now instead. So I open a new terminal window. I am inside the exercises, which means I can do a Vagrant uh, SSH. Uh, and then I have a terminal window in, logged in using Vagrant, and I would ac will actually add another uh, uh, terminal window. So I could use this. Win uh, terminal window to do like git commands when I check in code, commit code, push to GitHub, and I could use this one uh, when I start to work with my files. Now, uh, if we have a look in the exercise folder, you will see that there is actually not much there. 
we have the package.json, we have JS hint and the JS CS. Those are code style files that uh, will uh, tell WebStorm how to uh, format our code and edit config as well, how many spaces we will use when we uh, press tab, for instance. But we have no no exercises in, in, in this one, it's just an empty shell. Well, the first thing, thing we need to do is to do an npm install. An npm install will install all dependencies for us. If it hasn't already, it might have actually... Yeah, it has, so we don't need to do that. Sorry. What we need to do, however, is to go back to our local machine and you will see that we are in the master. And I said that we have a lot of branches uh, in this repo, each branch representing one exercise. So if you go to the course web page, you will find those exercises and what the branches are called. We have, for instance, one called Tiny Tunes, I guess. So we will uh, check out that right now. We do it by writing git check out. Uh, can I? No, I can't change the font size. I hope you see. Git check out tiny tunes. Uh, now you see that we switched branch to tiny tunes and something should appear up here as well. We get a new folder named tiny tunes uh, and tiny tunes will have all, uh, all you need to need for running this exercise. And you have a readme file. Uh, this one is uh, published. Whoa. That, yeah, didn't say much, but this is some short instructions of starting up everything. Um, so you could have a look at that if you like. But inside we have two folders that we will go through. We have the server folder and this one is actually just if we if we needed some kind of server for our application we would place it there. Uh, in this case it's a client only application so we will have the fun code in, in the client uh, folder. Inside the client folder you will find the debug, the source and the test. Uh, test folder is if we need tests like unit tests, uh, integration tests, we will place them there. We have none for this uh, assignment or this exercise. Uh, we have the source folder. This is where we place our source code and this one is the one you will work in, basically. You could actually map up WebStorm starting with the source folder if you like, but since we will change uh, uh, exercises, uh, you, then you would have to need to start a new project for each exercise, so this is a little bit easier to work with like this. Inside the source folder we have the CSS uh, folder, images, uh, JavaScript and an index.html. And we have set up some optimization here, so when you start altering files, those files will be watched and when you save they will uh, be copied into the debug folder. So in the debug folder you will s find something similar similar to this setup, but a little bit different. Uh, since they are named stylesheet, JavaScript and image instead of CSS images and JS. So uh, this debug folder is actually the, the running code on the client. So the client should run this code and this is only for source development. So what will happen here is that for instance, JavaScript files will be packed. If you have a bunch of JavaScript files, like 20, 20 JavaScript files, all will be bunched together into one file and published uh, in the build.js file. So we minimize the number of, of uh, HTTP calls from the client to the server. But let's start it up. To start it, we need to run uh, npn run debug. Uh, what with this will do is start all the, the watchers, uh, start watching the source uh, folder for changes uh, and write those changes into the debug folder. I guess we got an index.html, so uh, if we have a look in this index.html, it looks like this, and this one is a replication of that file. Um, why do we do this? Yeah, this is because uh, normally you need some kind of build system for for minimizing CSS and adding stuff. Uh, uh, you might have heard of tools like Grunt and Gulp, which are really, really popular for those kind of tasks. In this case, we have scripted everything inside of packet.json and using npn uh, 
to, to, to script this and you can find the scripts and what they do in the package.json file. If you go down here you'll see that we have all everything set up, how to which files to watch and how to copy them and stuff. Uh, this is as I said often used by uh, done by Gulp and or Grunt, but we, we tried out uh, MPN instead because it's a cleaner cleaner way. You don't need uh, extra packages uh, to do anything. Not many packages anyway. So if I start working in this one, instead of good reading, I add yeah, and save that one. You see that the rebuild will be made, and if we go into the index file. Uh, those changes should be what didn't didn't it didn't work? Oh my God, why? Starting build HTML. Mm -hmm. I should maybe I shouldn't have it open. Uh, but it should be able to handle that. Adding some more code, saving, saving, rebuilding, looking at that one, it hasn't rebuilt. I will have to take a moment to think about this, why it's not working. Okay, so, so while I was sitting here just thinking, I mean, it says here that it copied everything, every HTML file in the source folder and put it in the debug. So it should have worked and finally it just appeared. So some kind of latency in the in in WebStorm, I guess. It it should be instant. Uh however, uh let's close. You should not uh change or alter anything in the debug folder. Everything should be altered in the in the in the source folder. So so change things here. You will also see that, okay, we have an app.js file, uh, but when we look in the uh, index.html, we, we find that, oh, the actual file being loaded is the javascript slash build.js, and that's because it's this file that is loaded when we are looking uh, at this in the browser. And we will look in the browser right now. So when we, uh, when we started this MPN run debug, we also started a simple web server inside of the browser. Uh, so ha let's have a look at that. And that's running on localhost uh, 3000. Uh, so this is where our code is. And let's make a bold change again and uh, alter this text once again. Dot dot dot, saving it, going to the browser and refreshing, and yeah, it works. So it's actually copying the files. Uh, and here are actually the uh, instructions on what to do on, on the first exercises in this tiny tune. So you will go through those exercises by writing code in the JavaScript. And if we, if we do something in the JavaScript, we could just do a simple, yes, this package directory is not... Okay, so we could set that up. Uh, doesn't find the DSCS package. Uh, let's have a look. It should be installed locally in this machine as well. So I will go to my repository. What, where was it? It was here, right? Oh, a lot of stuff. Um, no, one exercises, exercise. Didn't we have an... Uh, uh, oh. I thought that might have missed one thing. Anyway, the GS, JSCS, you could install it um, uh, globally. Uh, I haven't. I thought it was installed locally when we did Vagrant up, uh, but I m might need to run npm install manually. Well, it should be actually... They are installed globally on the Vagrant machine. Ah, okay. Uh, if you have it installed, you could 
could point to the G GSES package file on your local machine uh, because that's globally installed inside of uh, of the Vagrant machine. That's why we can't reach it from from outside. Anyway, uh, if we do a console.log, hello, save that one. We will see that the JavaScript is rebuilt. Uh, we could run this code, we could do an inspect, uh, and we will probably see the code in the console, like hello. So this works perfectly. Uh, if we have a look at the, um, the sources, uh, we will probably find that... Uh, oh, where is it? Have they changed something? Where is my JavaScript? Oh, refresh and there it is, okay. Uh, there is my JavaScript uh, and we have the build.js. Hmm. Debugging this is not fun uh, because what has happened is that Browserify has taken our modules and stuff and made it uh, into a self-invoking function and minimized it so it's only one line of code more or less and debugging this is a pain. Uh, um, uh, fortunately we have also added source mapping so that uh, in this build file there is a source map back to our original files telling the browser what which code came from which file originally. And we can see this uh, shadowed here in uh, in the, this tiny tunes client source.js. So if we go into this one, we will actually found, find our app.js with the same files that we have on on the uh, when we develop. So we could debug using this shadowed uh, um, part of the code instead of the build.js. This has actually not be, been uh, um, uh, downloaded into the browser, the source mapping is just telling which code should go where uh, to the browser. So this is quite a neat system. So when you debug in the browser you could use it uh, like this instead. Uh, and now you're up and running. You could write your code in the app.js and you could um, 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 add CSS and images and, and stuff and they will be all be copied into the debug folder. Uh, and I think that's it. Now we're up and running. So the last thing I want to point out is, okay, so we are working, we are finished with the tiny tunes. What do we do? Okay, of course, we do. A, we could do a git status. And we will find that, okay, we have some changes here. Uh, actually, we are tracking the this debug folder that wasn't meant to be be done. But oh, that's okay. Uh, we do git add, git commit uh, minus m fin done. Uh, ah, sh you shouldn't write uh, bangs in the uh, the comment. Then you get this quote. How do I exit that one? Uh, git status. Is it committed? Uh, changes to be committed. Oh, it didn't work. Done. Like that. Um, and now we could do a git push. Okay, and now you see that we pushed the tiny tunes branch uh, up to GitHub. And if we go to GitHub, uh, have, a w have a look. Uh, now we will probably find two branches here, I hope. We did not. Oh, shoot. I have too much... Shoot, shoot, shoot. I have too much. <laughs> uh, right, so I actually pushed pushed to the CSS learning objects. That wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, I need to change that branch back. Uh, you have no permissions to do this. You should git push origin. And uh, maybe... Uh, origin. Maybe we need to add the branch as well. No, we pushed to uh, our exercises. Shoot. Yeah, and now we have two branches like this. Um, 
we could do a get git checkout master and you will find that all of those files will uh, disappear from exercises should disappear and they did and we could check out a new like memory git checkout another exercise um, this is a little bit slow and oh, there we have the memory which is built on the same way with the client the bug and the source folder and you can start working on that exercise so you basically change exercise by changing branch uh, in inside uh, of this repo and that is pretty much it when you're done for the day you just do a con uh, control C to to stop the script you do an exit to exit the vagrant machine and you do a vagrant halt to shut down the machine uh, you have checked in all your code if you do a vagrant destroy now this basically destroys the the virtual machine removes it from your computer saves you a lot of space you should probably do this when you're finished with the exercises or the course uh, but this I mean the, the configuration of the machine is still in the vagrant file so if you in a later stage want to check out this from github you just do a vagrant app and everything will be up and running as you had it so that's that's good as well okay thank you for watching mm -hmm.